So, I got some bad news. Today is Tuesday, May 21st, 2019. And last week, I went and saw my rheumatologist. And she basically told me that I have full-blown lupus. And for those of you who don't know what lupus is, it's an autoimmune disease where your body's own white blood cells attacks itself. So uh, my body is attacking my healthy organs and tissues, like my lungs. Um, at one point, like my hair was falling out. I'll get to that in a second when I tell you my story. But um, yeah, my hair was falling out. My lungs were inflamed. Uh, I had inflammation in my heart. And, you know, she told me that, you know, this lupus has no cure and that I'm going to be on medications for the rest of my life to just maintain the disease, you know, keep it under control um, and just monitor certain things so I don't get a flare up. That's where the lupus just gets more aggressive and, you know, attacks my body. So I want to go over some of my blood work results to show uh, how high or low I tested on these uh, lupus markers. There's actually four main blood markers that determine whether or not someone has lupus. So there's the RNP antibodies, which in a normal level should be less than one. And mine is uh, 1.1. There's the Smith antibodies, which again should be less than one, and I'm at a 4.4. There's the SSARO antibody, which again should be under one, and I'm at an eight. And then here, this last one, the rheumatoid factor, which is like the definitive marker, is uh, should be less than 15, and I'm at a 35. So, you know, based on the blood work and all of the symptoms I had in the hospital, you know, she basically just confirmed it that I have full blown lupus. And there's also this C reactive protein that they can test to see how much overall inflammation you have in your entire body. So, how much stress your body is under. And that should be under 10 in someone who doesn't have an autoimmune condition. And mine is at a 175. So, you know, just stupid high. And it explains the reason why, you know, I was going through a lot of stuff this past year. So first and foremost, you know, there it is. Like, I have full-blown lupus. There's no denying this. This is something that I'm going to have to, you know, work with. Uh, hopefully not for the rest of my life, like my doctor says. Because... The truth is, I don't fully believe her, um, and here's why. You see, in October of 2018, so about eight months ago, you know, this is when I really started to go to the doctors more because, you know, I felt really off within my body. A lot of things just, you know, wasn't working the way it should be. You know, I had these giant lymph nodes that was about this big on the side of my neck. And um, I didn't really think much of it because a few years ago, I actually had a lymph node removed right underneath my chin. And it was also pretty big, you know, about, about this big. And I had it surgically removed and the doctors told me that it was benign and it, it wasn't anything for me to worry about. So, you know, I thought to myself, great, you know, I can just get on with my life and I don't have to think or worry about this ever again. But in October, I started getting more lymph nodes. So it started off with this huge, well, that's the one I noticed was this huge one on my neck. And as I started going online, looking things up, I decided to look for more underneath both armpits, just un uh, above my collarbone and basically anywhere lymph nodes can be uh, detected without, you know, getting uh, an x-ray. So uh, both sides of my groin, both armpits, everywhere lymph nodes could be found, I had swollen lymph nodes. And that, you know, was just like a huge red flag. So 
I decided to go see my primary doctor and, you know, he was straight up with me like, you know, hey man, um, you know, we're going to have to get some testing. It looks like a possible lymphoma, you know, and he said that his, his dad had lymphoma and, and actually died. So, you know, now I'm like taking my health real seriously now and, and I went to go get some tests done. Um, they tested me for lymphoma and leukemia, a few other things. I don't remember, but my, it was mainly for cancer that, that they were concerned about. And all the tests came out negative. But, you know, just because of how I felt, I knew something was off. I was just chronically tired, you know, all the time. Just not really feeling okay. Uh, just forgetful. So I knew there was something else. They just haven't found it yet. So now it's about a month later, I'd say around Thanksgiving. And, you know, my hair starts to fall out. And it started off real thin. It was like, you know, my hair was just uh, fading, like at the top, which was perfectly normal for somebody who was 25. You know, I know a lot of people younger than 25 that are completely bald. So for my hair to start uh, thinning out at 25, I just thought, well, you know, I know I don't feel right, but maybe it's just my time to, to go bald. You know, my dad is bald, uncles are bald, my older brother is losing his hair. So I, I just knew, hey, it is what it is. But here's the thing, from the end of November until until January, I, I lost pretty much like all my hair. I had this huge, uh, like rash, uh, painful rash, by the way. And, and it was bleeding. I mean, I'm going to show you pictures of what it looked like. Um, but just take my word for it because I didn't actually take pictures of my head at, at my worst because, you know, it, it was bad. You know, I just wore a hat all day, every day. You know, it, it wasn't something that I wanted to take a picture of, but it was actually a lot worse than the picture you're seeing right here. And it was painful too. And like, it, I just knew, Hey man, I, I got to keep seeing these doctors. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why they can't find anything, but clearly something isn't right. You know, so I kept doing my research and, you know, thank God for today, the day and age that we're living in, you know, you can learn anything you want to learn just by Googling it, you know, watching YouTube videos, picking up a book, <laughs> audio book, like really you can educate yourself on just about anything and you don't have to just blindly accept what a so-called expert tells you, you know, you can form your own opinions. So, you know, that's what I did. I went online and was just looking to learn as much as I could about cancer and, you know, how the disease actually uh, destroys the body and, and, you know, where it originates from, all these kind of things. And I found that there are quite a few people out there that have actually healed themselves naturally from their cancer without the conventional treatment, you know, the chemo, the radiation, and, and the surgery. So that obviously caught my attention, you know. I don't want to take uh, unnecessary medications that could harm my body. So I found a YouTube channel. Uh, the, guy, the guy's channel is Chris Beat Cancer. And he's a guy who had cancer, colon cancer, in 2003. And he healed himself naturally without the conventional chemo and radiation. He did it through eating an all-natural plant-based diet. Just fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and plants, herbs, things like that. Things that come from nature. And... You know, there's no side effects from eating these real plant-based foods because they're natural and they're, they're not laced with chemicals and, and just things that are inorganic and that shouldn't be inside of our body. 
So his channel is just filled with videos of his story and lots of other people who have also healed themselves of their cancer without the chemo and radiation. So that was like the first seed planted in my mind in November. And um, I just knew from that that, hey, you know, if people can cure themselves or heal themselves, you know, you got to be careful with the word cure. If people can heal themselves from their cancer naturally without the super expensive and, and toxic medication, then, you know, hey, maybe this stuff could work for other diseases as well. So this is why after my rheumatologist, I don't think she did it on purpose, but she kind of tried to kill any hope of me getting better on my own unless I took the medications for the rest of my life and stay out of the sun and wore, you know, just SPF proof clothing and, and creams and, and just you know, living this life of uh, being afraid of a flare-up. So this crispy cancer guy really uh, planted that seed in my head that, you know, maybe we don't need the medications for any and every little thing. Um, maybe all the body really needs is vitamins and minerals that it may not be getting from the standard American diet. So I cleaned up my diet and I started just adding a whole bunch of new vegetables that I wouldn't normally eat or enjoy, but for the health benefits, I would just, you know, suck it up and eat it anyway and taking a bunch of supplements like vitamin C. Um, actually, I took quite a bit of vitamin C, about 20 grams a day, a bunch of liposomal stuff. And just eating things that naturally had vitamin C in it, like kiwis and oranges. And um, after trying a lot of new foods, taking out a lot of junk, I was still getting like more and more sick. You know, the, the chronic fatigue got worse. My hair was worse. Um, I started having skin problem, skin problems like rashes on the side of my of my back and stomach. Uh, the brain fog wasn't getting any better. And soon I didn't even have the energy or desire to work out, which is something that I've always had in my life, something I've always did. You know, it takes no discipline whatsoever for me to just get up and go for a run because I've been working out since I was 10. And, you know, it's just, that's just the type of person I am. But with this uh, lupus, you know, progressively getting worse, I didn't have the drive to do a lot of things that I would normally enjoy. So, you know, finally, I decided to quit my job. I was thinking at the time that, well, you know, maybe I just need a little break. You know, I wasn't really happy with the job I had at the time. So I thought that, you know, I just need maybe two or three weeks to just uh, recharge and spend time with myself to find out like what do I really want to do with my life because you know this this job isn't really cutting it and my health isn't getting better my joints started flaring up you know just having a lot of stiffness in my knees and elbows and um, it just made a whole lot of sense to me at the time to quit my job and to you know make time for me you know, hope, hoping that I would, I would just get better on my own if I rested more. So that didn't really work. Um, I just kept getting worse and worse. So I went and saw this holistic doctor because after the whole um, awakening from guys like Crispy Cancer, okay, I realized that our conventional doctors may not know as much as we think they do. So I went to get a second opinion from a holistic doctor just to see, you know, what she thinks about all of my symptoms. And she right off the bat went and did this extensive blood work where she took out or, you know, the lab took out 22 tubes of blood. 
so they can see um, everything that I've been eating within the last six months. And what I saw or learned from those blood results was just, you know, eye opening because it's, it, it showed that uh, dairy should not be in my diet. You know, it shows how much how much of an inflammatory response dairy is causing in my body. And, you know, those are a few other things that I'm going to try and limit. But dairy was like the big one. And she flat out told me, hey, <laughs> Jeff, this dairy, you got to cut it out. All right. No milk, no cheese, no, no more pizza. Like, that's just not for you. OK. And it's and she was also able to see this high uh, C-reactive protein, which shows the overall inflammation in, in, in your body. And she was saying, you know, like she didn't diagnose me right then and there, but the high uh, inflammation in my body that she saw from the C-reactive protein and the dairy, she was able to see that in the blood work. This is information that I wouldn't have received from a conventional doctor because what I noticed is that they don't seem to understand uh nutrition. I mean, as crazy as it might sound, but, you know, from the time I spent seeing all of these conventional doctors, not one of them mentioned my diet or if I should, you know, remove something, maybe there's something I'm sensitive to or allergic to, nothing. It was just um, a bunch of tests. And then if you test positive for this or that, here's the medication. But it doesn't really make sense to me how, um, like true story, some doctors could prescribe a cholesterol lowering drug and still allow you to eat pizza and, and, and french fries. You know, that doesn't make much sense at all. Or a diabetic who's allowed to eat a bunch of like white bread and chocolate chip cookies, you know, ice cream, which... I thought was common sense or knowledge that, you know, these simple refined carbs would, would raise the, the, the person's uh, blood sugar, you know, and you don't, you don't want to get your, your glucose from simple carbs. It would make more sense if you're going to eat carbs to get it from some, some oatmeal or a sweet potato, you know, brown rice, things like that. I thought everyone knew that, especially health professionals. But, you know, clearly not. So I kind of had more faith in my holistic doctor because she made more sense to me. But I didn't have enough time to change my life because uh, a week later, I ended up in the hospital and, you know, just really, really sick with high fevers nonstop for a week and had I known this information earlier in life, maybe I could have prevented the whole rushing to the hospital in an ambulance and, and you know, needing to be, you know, taken care of for, for a week. So now everything that I'm talking about, it happened uh, last month in, the, in April. And um, it was about two days before getting rushed to the hospital. I uh, discovered uh, this guy or Dr. CB that a lot of people, you know, share videos about. I've actually heard about him a few years ago, but, you know, because I thought I wasn't sick or it, it just never really caught my a attention or interest to watch some of his videos because I, I didn't think I was sick. But he's a guy who is, um, you know, supposedly cured a lot of diseases, like the ones that we're taught has no cure, like cancer, uh, lupus, AIDS, herpes, and a bunch of autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, and um, multiple sclerosis. You know, the, the list goes on and on. And, and this guy, you know, claims to cure all of these diseases with his alkaline diet and natural uh, plants, you know, natural plants. So now because I'm like really, really sick 
and you know things are just not getting any better all I can think about is my health because of how much pain I'm in every day I um I guess I was ready for his information at the time and again this is 2 days before I wound it up in the hospital so here I am just binge watching all of the videos I can find of Dr. CB speaking um I had, only videos of him speaking. I didn't want to hear what other people had to say about him because, you know, I didn't want to hear no he said, she said stuff. You know, I wanted to hear the information straight from the source. The guy, the man, the myth, the legend, you know, the guy himself who, who claims to cure all disease. And what he had to say uh, really just resonated with me. I was so inspired and... You know, I was determined to change my life. You know, I went to the to the grocery store the next day and bought as much as I could to, you know, change my diet. But I guess it wasn't like I didn't find the information soon enough because like I ended up in the hospital two days later, you know, not being able to eat all of the new foods that I, I I now introduced to to my to my life couldn't even stomach them I had anything I would ingest that that wasn't water what would cause me so much stomach pain and it was because of this inflammation that was just progressively getting worse like you know the pain was just unreal and you know it, it went over from like it started off in my stomach after I would eat something and it would move over to my lower back and basically just crippling me, you know, I, my my wife found me like on the floor on my knees and I was in so much pain. But at the time it was like, you know, I'm good. I'm good. Let me just let me just go for a run. I'll be I'll be all right. You know, and now, you know, thinking back, it, it was just like pretty dumb of me to not just you know, <laughs> admit that I, I I needed some help, but I just, uh, yeah, like there was nothing I can do. I was, I wasn't getting off of the ground by myself because of this painful inflammation in my lower back, my stomach. And I went to the hospital, um, and they gave me a bunch of like pain medication to like numb the pain and they basically told me after all of their tests that I had diarrhea and they gave me, I think it's called magnesium citrate to help, uh, help me poop, you know, flush, flush out my system. And they just sent me home like that. Hey, you have diarrhea, take this magne magnesium citrate, you'll be good. I went, I went home that day. I mean, I knew, I knew it was crap that they told me, but you know, what could I do? I don't know what I have. Like they're the experts here. You know, I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I don't, I didn't know what I had. So I, I put up, I was just trusting that, Hey, hopefully this magnesium citrate will help me poop. And, um, it didn't, you know, after taking it, I started having fevers. I did not poop and I just had these massive fevers and, you know, I'm home now. Just like, I don't know what's in that magnesium citrate, but I was just completely out of it. Um, almost falling over in my chair because I don't have enough strength to sit up straight, you know, just sitting up straight felt like so much work. So, um, I just lay down on the couch in pain, having this fever, joint pain, hard time breathing. Um, and I stayed like that until the next day where <laughs> the pain just kept getting worse. This inflammation in my lungs and back and now my heart, you know, just kept getting worse. And it got so bad that like I couldn't even talk because my inflamed lungs didn't uh, produce enough oxygen for me to talk and breathe at the same time. So I would just, uh, you know, say one or two words at a time so I could have enough oxygen to breathe. 
So, you know, obviously I, I can't, I couldn't stay like that. So I was uh, sent right back to the hospital and um, <sighs> my experience at the hospital traumatized me. Honestly, I believe for the rest of my life, like I, I'm going to be this health nut for as long as I live because these people just really had no understanding for nutrition. You know, I had blood work from my holistic doctor to, to show them maybe I was thinking maybe I could give them uh, some some clues, you know, some some valuable information that could kind of, you know, lead them to a diagnosis. But they completely ignored the fact that I told them that, hey, I shouldn't be consuming dairy. You know, it, it's causing a lot of inflammation in my body. They, like, they never even heard of a condition called leaky gut, which my holistic doctor told me I have because of this inflammatory food that I'm sensitive to, the dairy, okay? At the hospital, they have never heard of leaky gut. So they were just giving me a bunch of medication, antibiotics for pneumonia, and they even thought I had this, this uh, disease called familiar Mediterranean fever. They thought that's what I had. So they gave me another medicine, another uh, drug, uh, cochicine for that, without even knowing for sure that, you know, that's what I have. And again, ignoring the clues that I'm trying to give them. Hey, I have leaky gut. You think maybe I should like stay away from certain food? No, nothing like that. You can eat whatever you want, they told me. Ice cream. Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> the um, the menu at the hospital is uh, it's, it's non-organic, first of all. And it's it's like I know they can afford it. Hospitals make money. You know, hospitals make like everyone knows that hospitals make money. So I know they can afford organic fruits and vegetables, things that I would assume a sick person needs. But no, there's, you know, pizza and cookies. The fruits they have are canned fruits um, and uh, donuts, brownies, you name it, you know, mozzarella sticks, french fries. But I tried my best with what I had. They did have a few healthier options like uh, bean burger and you know, I did eat their fruits and vegetables, even though it wasn't much, but, you know, it was it was better than nothing. And, you know, I was also blessed to have, like, this great support system, you know, just my family coming over, um, bringing me organic berries while I was in the hospital, bringing me uh, reverse osmosis water to drink, you know. So, you know, I thank my family for that, just being there for me, giving me some nutrients because I felt like I wasn't getting any in the hospital. So after leaving the hospital, um, they, they, they left me on some more drugs, uh, a steroid called prednisone, which is used to like suppress the immune system. And in my case, because I have lupus, it helped because... Um, you know, if the immune system is attacking itself, then a steroid that suppresses the immune system will, you know, prevent your immune system from attacking you. So the prednisone helped, you know, I wasn't in a whole lot of pain while on the prednisone that they gave me after leaving the hospital. But because of the side effects, I didn't want to be on this drug forever. And the doctors even, you know, openly tell you that this is not something that you want to be on long term. It causes severe, you know, side effects. Like it'll, it'll mess you up. You know, you don't, you don't want to be on this for more than like two weeks, you know, three weeks. Like you got to taper yourself off of prednisone. It's, it's like the strongest uh, steroid to reduce inflammation in the body. While tapering off this prednisone, you know, I remember, okay, two days before getting into the hospital, everything I learned from Dr. Sebi, all right? So 
I was already changing my diet from there, you know, just introducing these new plant-based foods, you know, the, the, the seeds, the nuts, the, 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 the herbs, um, and uh, staying away from uh, animal products. So this is what I did fresh out the hospital while taking the prednisone to try and like, you know, give my body a little boost, giving it minerals, giving it what it needs to, to like, you know, recover. So this is the reason why I've decided to not listen to my rheumatologist because, you know, maybe some doctors don't understand health as much as we think they do. So that's why I'm, I'm choosing to uh, heal my body from lupus naturally. Um, I don't know 100% for sure if this is going to even work, but I have faith that it will. So, you know, that's the reason for me creating this YouTube channel, because I wanted to uh, basically document this, share everything that I'm doing. And hopefully um, if this does work and I heal myself, I can inspire you know, future people who get diagnosed with lupus and, and to show them that they have options and that they don't have to take uh, expensive medications that have side effects for the rest of their life. So, you know, I'm basically the guinea pig on this one. If you know someone who has lupus, you know, I think it would help to share this YouTube channel with them because I'm going to share everything that I go through on a daily basis uh, managing my lupus and hopefully eventually healing myself completely and I can start working out like I like I've always did and um, yeah this would be a great resource for anyone who has lupus I believe so please share that with them and if you would like to support me you can leave a donation down below and uh, June 27th mark your calendars that's when I'll be following up with my rheumatologist, going over some more blood work, hopefully showing that, you know, I'm improving with what I'm doing and not taking her medication. So um, I think it would be, you know, very powerful to see how, you know, I started with, you know, uh, the 35 rheumatoid factor and, and, you know, all these high blood markers for lupus. And, you know, we're going to see if, if I improve or not. So whether it works and I'm a hero or if it doesn't and I look like a complete idiot, I'm willing to take that risk. I'm going to share what I'm doing all over YouTube. So again, subscribe to the channel if this would be valuable to you or anyone you know who's struggling with lupus. And make sure you hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And um, leave your comments, questions, concerns down below. Um, this channel isn't big yet at all, so I'll, I have plenty of time to, you know, get back to everyone who leaves a comment. Leave a donation down below if you want to support the channel. Again, my name is Jeff, and I'll see you in the next video.